What's up? 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 What's up, everyone? This is Lee, the video game trick guy. So I'm thinking about doing a documentary uh, about my entire experience in the virtual reality game trick industry. And one of the things I want to accomplish with this documentary is answer a lot of your questions. I mean, you think I'm a gamer, right? You think I'm a gamer? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, yeah we, we actually fight sometimes because instead of <laughs> spending time with my wife, who I love very, very much, I'm playing Mad Max or something. Like <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dana, get down! <laughs> get down again, Dana, get down! This Friday I had two events for the Virtual Reality Game Truck and I made $1,057 on two events. I believe in my product, it's a great product. I mean, kids run out and yell, they go, oh, Game Truck, Game Truck, I wanna play. I love it, I love what I do. <laughs> we must get to the chapel. <laughs> Talk the talk, walk the walk, get paid, move forward, grow mentally, physically, right? One day at a time. This is Lee's shoe. Right? If it bleeds, we can kill it. One of my drivers called out today, so I figured, you know what? I might as well make a video sort of going through today. Again, it's Friday. There are five parties scheduled for today between the three trucks. Right now it is 10.45. I probably won't be back till super late today. Very paranoid about making sure that I am prepped for almost any situation when I go out to an event. Make sure that it is fully gassed when you go on a full day and you have multiple parties. You don't want to run out of gas. And I also got to gas up the little red canister. Hola, señor. Only afuera, por favor. So I just got to my first school. Uh, it is lunchtime right now. Over 200 kids saw the video game truck as I was pulling around and parking. <laughs> three trailers right now we are on track for doing 78 parties this month alone that's like I think that's a new record and today is the one and only day that I get off in the month of June just so you know this video has pretty much nothing to do with the video game truck business but I figured since so many of you uh, buy products from me then you might as well know who I am that you know I'm not a corporation I'm just a human being who likes to work and work out I'm gonna go get food. There's some food right here. One of the things I love about California is we have more variety here than pretty much anywhere on the planet. Like food, people, just everything. Southern California is like the like the capital of the world. Yeah. What do I love about doing what I do? Uh, no one has told me how to do or what to do, or when to do, or why to do it for years now. And that was one of my biggest things that I wanted to achieve in my life. What is a video game truck or a video game trailer, a virtual reality trailer, virtual reality game truck? It has many names, but what is it? Think of a trailer. It's about 30 foot long trailer that's pulled by a truck. And inside this trailer, you have seats, you have a whole bunch of televisions, you have virtual reality units, and you have lots of consoles and video games. So when this trailer pulls up to a location, let's say like a birthday party, and then you have an entire uh, like birthday party of like 20 plus kids that go inside this trailer, and all they do is play video games for like two or three hours. 
And it's not just for kids. It's also, you know, for adults. It could be corporate events. It could be churches. It's, it's just a really, really cool mobile concept on wheels. So before I started my video game truck business, uh, it's actually interesting. I sort of fell into the business without really planning it to happen the way it happened. I was a truck driver before and I would drive cross country one end to the other, driving the big rigs, delivering all sorts of goods. Driving started to impact my health and it got to the point where I had to change what I was doing. That's when the video game truck, you know, fairy came to me and said, well, why don't you give this a try? So I started doing my research into different companies and then well, what do you know? There's a company that's selling a trailer. They basically sold me a used trailer. I thought, I thought it was a new trailer, but it was actually a used trailer. And because I didn't know any better, um, you know, I bought it, right? So I bought this used trailer for $64,000. And that was sort of like my beginning. I started getting a little bit frustrated because in, in the first couple of months of my operation, my phone wasn't really ringing. I was pressed and I started learning how to market basically in a new way. Every single moment I spent just learning how to market. How do you market? How do you market? How do you market? And then I started applying the things that I've learned. And as I started this process, the phone call started to come to me and I started to service events. Every moment that I wasn't working on, uh, you know, or servicing an event, I was studying. Uh, long story short, we got up to five trailers. And at that point, I wasn't really even servicing anymore. I was just dispatching. I was sitting at home, like with my headpiece. And anytime a call came in, I would dispatch it to truck A, truck B, truck C, truck D, truck E. After that, I said to myself, you know what? This is really cool, but what's next? I apologize, I don't remember. I, 2016 or 2017. Uh, the Sony VR headset was about to come out. And I said to myself, wow, how can this go into a trailer, right? And that was then what pushed me into the direction of, I need to get rid of all of the trailers that I have right, and start building my own. And that was sort of how the journey began into the virtual reality game trucks. But yeah, that was sort of how I fell into the video game truck business. So I started with the regular video game truck and then evolved into a virtual reality game truck. Now we have independent locations all around the country and I think it's super awesome, you know? Well, I myself used to have problems with this years ago. It was difficult to pick up the phone and try to talk to somebody. However, the more you do this, the easier it gets. And there are three levels that I used to do for myself do when I was getting started uh, and growing my business. The first level is 10 calls a day, 25 calls a day, and then 50 calls a day. And compared to now, I make now more money in, in one day and, than, than I did in the entire month uh, when I started. So that's pretty cool. So let's review. $2,500, uh, 1000 bucks and $1,800, right? All within just a couple of days. Most of the work is lifted by the virtual reality game truck. Before I continue, you know, looking at the business and talking about it, here's a little bit about myself and sort of how I got started in business in general from a very young age. When I came to America in, in the late 90s, I was very young. We didn't have any money for anything besides just the most basic, basic essentials, you know, like food and, you know, after paying the rent, that was it. Anything that I wanted, I couldn't like ask my mom for it. I would have to buy it myself. And there was a store that we walked onto one time and all of a sudden I saw this console, this video game console. It was a Sega Genesis and you could play Mortal Kombat on the Sega Genesis game. So for about two weeks, I would come to that store and play Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. And I was like, man, I really, I really like video games. But, you know, again, I'm in a situation where I, where I can't afford anything. So the question that I asked myself when I was very young was, how do I get this stuff? Like, my mom can't get it for me. As I was uh, walking back from Target, I looked over to the side and there's like this big dumpster, right? 
and someone threw away a perfectly good TV. So I took this TV, I dragged it home, I cleaned it up, and then I said to myself, well, maybe I could sell this thing. And there were some old, really light, nice old Latino ladies that did garage sales on the side. I asked, I said, hey, could, could I like just stand here with you and sell this thing? And like, oh, see, sí, mijo. So I sold this thing that I found. I made $5 and I was like all happy. And then I'm like, well, there's an opportunity here. So I started going around and I started looking for things that I could sell that people would throw away. At the end, on the Saturday, what I would do is I'd, I'd like get this big blanket and I would just put everything on it and sell it. And so that was how I was able to buy my first Sega Genesis. But then I really ramped up my entrepreneurial selling and, you know, doing stuff. I found out in school that if you get into this class called Avid, you have to write notes. And I said, well, I'm pretty sure people aren't going to want to write notes in Avid class. So I started selling a, a 50 cents a page, quarter a page, and I would make money with that. And so all I did was do garage sales, sell notes, sell my lunch, just I would sell anything and everything that I think that could have been of value. And and I think that's that's where I really started my career within business. So I had to create the opportunity myself because we were just really poor. Like we didn't have anything. And that then sort of converted I think into what I'm doing now, which is still the video game business. <laughs> Video game truck rental and photo booth rental. This is Lee. How may I help you? Okay. And is this a birthday party? Is it for a boy or for a girl? And ma'am, before I could help you with that, can you tell me what day of the week the party would fall on? It would be $350 for a two-hour event if the event is past 1 p.m. Uh, if it's before 1 p.m., we could do it for $300 flat if it's a regular video game truck. We also have a virtual reality game truck. Every additional hour, it's a hundred dollars after that. What time would you like us to be at the event? But besides that, you're all set. We just need some parking to be safe for us and that's it. Thank you so much, Remy. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. In general, there are two main virtual reality game truck models. So the first one is known as the Mark II. The Mark II is currently the most popular model that we have on the road. It's about 6,000 pounds. There was the Mark I before. There's also the Mark II XL version, but the Mark II is the most popular one. So that one is 30 feet total with 26 feet internal real estate. And that allows for uh, seven VR stations for Sony. It allows for 10 to 18 players who are not doing VR, but regular games. It has two generators. And again, it's designed specifically to accommodate as much virtual reality as possible. This is the standard model on the outside. As you can see, it's 30 feet long. You have four feet over there in the front. That's for your generator, for your tongue. You could put the box on top if you want. The whole length of the trailer on the internal side, it's 26 feet and it's seven feet high as you see it's a triple axle you can see here we have a, a dual lock system so everything's gonna close up you got our in-house upholstery we have the four standard units again this is what you're getting when you buy your standard model of course you can add stuff to it if you want to this is your big money maker this this race car race seat parents play it, grandparents play it, teenagers kids six TVs total over here when someone's playing literally people just stand like this and all they do is take pictures upon pictures upon pictures so it's a great marketing tool now if you choose to add an additional system to this station while the player plays their game here racing you now just added four players here so now you just went to five okay so now there's five more stations over here and each one's capable of doing up to five players because so if we take a total right of six times five that's 30 people 30 people is not a joke that is a huge event you have your air conditioning number one and then as we move forward, you have air conditioning number two, air conditioning number three, and fans to move all of the air. The second trailer is an experimental trailer. It's something that has to be ordered, uh, and that is what you call the Mark III Mini. It's a tiny little trailer, it's like 16 feet. It does everything a virtual reality game truck does, 
except it's much, much smaller. So these are just, these are very custom. I might have one in the future that you'll probably see on the YouTube channel. So if you feel like purchasing one, let me know. With that said, there is also two version in general as you know, with the virtual reality game trip. The first version is branded. The second version is unbranded. Unbranded means you pick up your trailer when you're here and you are on your way, right? It's a product buy, and that's how a majority of the industry works. Branded unit is where you, know, you get the online training, you learn how to drive a truck. So these are the general current models that I build and that are available on the market. <laughs> So as you can see, we do a whole lot more than just video game stuff. Uh, we actually build like pretty much the whole freaking thing for you uh, from scratch. The build time of a virtual reality game truck uh, always varies. I, I think our record time was like three and a half weeks to get one fully done. So a lot really does depend on, you know, what's happening in the shop. Uh, and another thing is, you know, what is the availability of the axles, the metal, the material. Now we actually build the entire trailer from scratch. It doesn't exist and we build it fully in the shop. And now that we have that capability, we can, you know, we can see and look at the process and make sure that the quality is there. Uh, we were finally able to get to this step just recently, uh, but before that we had to purchase trailers from another company. So we were sort of dependent on their timetable and their, their schedule. And I'm very, very happy that that portion is now in house. So today we are also in the wrap office. I work with an amazing man. His name is Sergio. He's been running a company for many, many years. All of my wraps, all the detailing, everything that I need, I get from him. So I want to introduce you to him so that you understand that all of your graphics and design work is in really, really professional hands. Going on 11 years now, we've been uh, in the wrap game. We've wrapped everything from boats to trailers to motorhomes and vehicles, race, UTVs, uh, you name it. Everything that we do, we, we do in-house. We have uh, all of our printing equipment here in-house. We have our designers here in-house. We do everything from design to print, lamination and installation here in our facility. There are specific steps you can implement to help you in your business. For example, uh, email marketing, right? What is your daily schedule? What happens when you wake up? Do you know how to acquire clientele or client acquisition? A lot of it is understanding what it is that you actually need to do. So I hope you know some of the things that we talk about actually help you out uh, so that you could better understand what it is that you need to do if you do a business. The unit is extremely important. I mean, that's how you service, but really it's everything that happens after you have your unit, right? It's, it's what happens, it's what you know, and then what you, what you get after you have the unit that's really going to determine whether you, you make it or not. So There's so much work that happens in the back end that people don't see. It's ridiculous. It really is. Another question you might want to ask yourself, is this something that you really want to do? You know, a lot of people get very excited when they want to open their business. And unfortunately, that excitement has a tendency to run out really fast. And the reason for it is that before they even execute upon the business, uh, there is a major mistake that is made. And that is not truly understanding the amount of effort that it will require in order to execute upon the business think that you're going to do, do something and and it's just going to happen it, it doesn't work like that so you know 10 15 20 times the amount of effort is what it really takes in order for you to uh to not just break through obscurity but to actually gain momentum and then push forward you know but but the greatest thing will happen out of this you become so uh adapted 
to different situations and you become so malleable yet strong you you take on any and every shape and you you expand you know psychologically physically you you truly then become a whole lot more it all begins with uh, properly understanding that the amount of effort it will take is probably more than you've ever thought before why do many small businesses in general close shop is the person who's running the business right are they running to are they running to win or are they running the business not to lose when people operate a business they reach a certain level they become very comfortable they put the work in, in the beginning right the business is doing okay they're happy there really is no more need for them to push any further playing to win means that you have some fire under pardon my french your ass you want to expand you want to do more when you have downtime the question is and what do you do do you sort of just relax also a lot of companies do not innovate if you don't adjust you can only depend on your own old clientele for so long right how to avoid failures this is a basic playbook on a couple of steps and we look at why people fail so this arrow here this is a representation of your direction and your focus as you move forward you are going to encounter this part right here this is the representation of resistance and time as you execute and move forward you find the spot as to where you're going to attack and then you stick with it and you keep hammering non-stop continuous movement forward and you're going to start making room so as you chisel this out you're going to go further more right further more and your goal is to eventually get to point b we are now going to look at the real world how things run well now instead of chiseling away right at one point you're now chiseling away you know very slowly on multiple points instead of one is it slows you down in general also why does this happen? Why, why do we experience this? Because lack of clarity, that's a very, very big one. You sort of know what you want to do, but you're not clear as to what you want to do. What you're attempting to do is try to sort of just approach multiple things at the same time instead of one. And maybe perhaps you have no patience. The no patience part is probably the number one factor. Everyone wants everything now. This right here is where failure happens for people trying to do too much and not being patient if you are a business person let's say small business you enter in what's known as the push grind brace method you push through the resistance as far as you can when the resistance gets tough while you're pushing you are now grinding eventually you come to a stop and you brace when you brace the other force pushes back this is a great business to get into because the learning curve once you have the proper information it's not that steep you just have to have the right base well when you start a new business uh, sometimes a marketing company might approach you and be like hey uh, would you like us to help you drive some business your way this is something I'm introducing in 2020 for the training process and I'm gonna walk you through step by step by step what you should be doing to drive your business if you're my client it's free regardless of where you might be starting one of the things that I found to be common no matter what you do when when there's something that you want to leap into is this um, this uncertainty and the best way to conquer uncertainty sometimes is to realize what you have in front of you which is the training but I am gonna do everything I can within my power to put you in a position where you're no longer uncertain whether the business is for you or not after you finish your training and once you see that too selling will no longer really be oh I gotta sell somebody on the phone no it'll be a fun thing because it's a great business to get into that's what makes it so awesome yeah you can be a kid if and today's video is called how to start a video game truck business with little or no money so the first thing I would do is go to businessstartupchannel.com 
is free education that I offer when it comes to business in general. It's a different YouTube channel. And do an assessment of your area. How many schools are there, like elementary, junior highs, uh, colleges? Find out who it is that you must call, ask questions. You wanna find the person who basically directs the flow of activities. What is it that you're trying to do? You're trying to let them know that, hey, we're the new kids on the block. We have this awesome product coming your way in X amount of weeks. We would like to present it to you and show it to you absolutely free of charge. When can we do that? By picking up the phone, sending out the emails, going in person and greeting the people that make the decisions like activity directors, like the PTA board members, um, you are growing yourself. What I would do in this step is go and buy you know, two or three units. I would get me a tent, right? And then with that tent, now I have a business, right? Start doing free events for churches, lo uh, local uh, birthday parties, and you know anyone and everyone basically, including schools, who you can accommodate without charging money in the beginning, you start, you work. What I'm doing now is at each event that I go to, I take my phone and I start making videos of these people. And I have them sign off on a piece of paper saying, hey, we're gonna be using this stuff uh, to help us market. We're going to look at steps for practical business growth in your video game truck business. It begins always with the ask, as in what is the proper question? Step two is the plan, right? Because after you ask, you put together a sequence of written steps based on that ask. Execution is step three. In the execution, you commit to the action of working on the plan and the elements of the plan. The fourth step in the sequence is learn. What did you learn from that experience? Based on the answers that you provide for yourself, you now come to the fifth and final step, the tweak. Basically adjusting to the plan by asking questions based on new information, and then you repeat the whole sequence over and over and over. It's nice and early today. Usually I get my workouts in around 6, 6.30, but not 4.30. However, if my day demands that I need to push everything earlier, then that's what happens. But a lot of people say, you know, you have to get up early to get a lot of things done. I do not believe that that is the truth. I believe that you need to manage your time wisely in order for you to be effective or uh, efficient. You have to do things in the, ma in the manner in which they work and where you are uh, getting somewhere. You get up at the time in which makes things efficient for you. Do things because you want to, not because you're simply trying to stay busy to mask uh, a quiet desperation. <laughs> so if you're going to be running a business, don't just stay busy. Make sure you're productive. Make sure that you are driven by something that is pulling you to do more so that like you know when you get up you get up because you enjoy it if you're getting up and you're not enjoying it then there's an issue if you fail this will be the reason why if you do not allocate 60 to 80 hours towards acquiring new clientele you're gonna be in trouble and that's because you are either afraid or you are unaware of how to do this client acquisition Client acquisition should be your number one priority once you know what you're doing, making. Did you make 100 calls today? Uh, I don't know who to call, I don't know what to do. Good, somebody else will. There are three levels that I used to do for myself uh, when I was doing the reach out process. The first level is 10 calls a day, 25 calls a day, and then 50 calls a day. Make sure you're collecting emails from day one. Even if you don't have your trailer, start collecting emails. Let's say you got six or 700 emails. Well, now you can go into MailChimp. So you take those 600 emails, you create one email, hit the send button, and all those 600 emails will go out. Imagine if you were operating this in a strategic aggressive way, right? You run your business for three, four, five years, you get 10,000 emails plus. Think about it, when you come into a slow time and your phone's not ringing and you need business, all you do is take those 10,000 emails, Create an email saying, hey, if you book within the next two weeks, you get 30% off, no tax. And then you hit the send button, and with one click, 10,000 emails just went out. That's the power of email marketing. But to do that, you have to collect emails from day one. In order for you to grow, you will have to make sacrifices. 
And one of the reasons you're going to have to make these sacrifices is to ensure that you cut out unnecessary distraction as you grow your business. One of the difficult things that I had to do for the last two plus years, there are many with whom I, people who I used to hang out with, have fun, you know, have a beer, do things. Um, I no longer do that. You know, when you run a business, you don't have the luxury of just spending time and money. In the virtual reality game truck, you are catering to kids, teenagers, adults, and grandparents. So why would you want to cut yourself short and only work with events that are just for kids? You can work with events that are outside of just the demographics of the kids, but if it's not a virtual reality game truck, you cannot do that. You're cutting yourself short. I hope that you enjoyed this mini documentary. Now, if you are thinking about getting into this business, I'm pretty sure that you have some questions. So there's a couple of things that I ask of you to do your homework and talk to people in the industry. Make sure you understand what you're getting into. There is a channel called Start a Video Game Truck Business. I teach you information in there for free right there's like five years of videos it's done in a blog format after that you could call me and i will be happy to answer your questions and clear up anything that may be unclear if you decide to do this business or any business there will be mistakes mistakes are a part of any business i still make mistakes and the important thing is to catch them and improve upon the things that were done wrong or the mistakes that you've done right this is a great business if you have the proper knowledge, the proper skills, right, and the proper attitude. I will do my best to help you out and answer your questions if you believe that this is something that you want to do. This is Lee, the video game truck guy. If virtual reality game truck is something that's in your future, I will be happy to work with you, help you, and answer your question. Everybody, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go learn, right, go learn for free. Educate yourself, and then give me a call if you want to continue. Thank you so much, everyone. You have a super awesome day, morning, night, wherever it is that you are in the world. And I hope to be talking to you soon.